Um, greetings, Facebook. The one who comes in peace is always welcome. The one who comes to teach is always welcome. The one who comes to learn is always welcome. So I like to greet people with my intentions. And why I do that is because I always like people to know that either I'm, I come in peace or I come to teach or I come to learn. It's just so you know where I stand, you know, so I'm telling you my intentions. But today I wanted to do this video because, um, you know, a lot of, I've been reading a lot of posts, a lot of things from people saying that 2020 has been a year where um, they want it to be over with. They want 2020 to be done with. They want to go to 2021, etc. You know, and... I can't speak for everybody, but me, 2020 has been uh, a different year for me, a positive year. 2020 has been a year full of, you know, good fortunes, um, full of uh, possibilities for me. So I don't know about other people. I don't know how they're seeing 2020 as negativity. You know, I see 2020 as a year full of creativity, uh, full of creation energy, full of positive energy. So with that being said, what I wanted to talk about today was, yes, you know, things happen that sometimes we see these things, we see these things as, oh, you know, it's stopping us from living the life we used to live, right? We um, had, you know, but everything that happens in your life is a transitional move movement, it's for you to transition from one phase to another phase. You see, I always, um, you know, in the organic African paradigm, basically anything I do, I do it as a representation of the organic African paradigm. So the organic African paradigm is a movement for Africans globally. Um, it's to help uh, heal Africans from the trauma you know, from the trauma that we've gone through over these, uh, uh, the past centuries, you know, 13 centuries of trauma, the African people have gone through. So the organic African paradigm is a movement that was generated to help, uh, take us, transition us from trauma into, you know, once we heal and we've gone through this healing, we learn how to communicate. We learn how to disposition ourselves in a positive way. We can be able to be more efficient and more effective and more, um, we can use creativity uh, uh, more fluidly. You know, we can have a mind flow. So 2020 began in, you know, with this COVID, this whole COVID thing that happened in the world. You know, that's how 2020 started for many of us. You know, we're going by our business and then COVID happened and then they shut us in. And then they, when they put us in, this was a time many of us, uh, we lacked access to the things that we used to have. You know, when we got locked in for COVID, we, ha we lost access to most of the illusions. What people don't understand is what I always tell people in this world. There are three things you need to understand about this world. You only need to understand three things for you to be fine in this world. Just understand those three things and you will be okay. If you can exist in, if you can know the difference between those three things, nothing will stop you from getting what you want or getting where you need to go or being who you were meant to be. The first thing you need to know is, hey, my brother Bataki is here. Hey, welcome, brother. The one who comes in peace is always welcome. Thank you for showing up. You know, I decided to do this uh, uh, lecture because of all the, the people have been complaining about 2020. And I, on the other hand, I've had nothing but positive uh, uh, a year in 2020. I've had positivity and creativity this 2020. So um, I wanted to say maybe um, we are all looking at 2020 in the wrong lens. So that's why I'm doing this lecture on behalf of the organic African paradigm. So like I said, right, we came into this where uh, COVID happened. Be prior to COVID, what did we have really? Honestly, let's be honest with ourselves. What did we have prior to COVID? A lot of people call it freedom. That's what a lot of people call it. But honestly, what we had prior to COVID was we had entertainment, a lot of access to entertainment. We had football, basketball, and we had uh, uh, nightclubs, bars, and various other forms of entertainment. It's what we had prior to COVID. 
right? Prior to COVID, we took we took we neglected or, or we took for granted the fact that we could breathe air, you know, freely. We took for granted that we walk around and just uh, uh, taking the oxygen in. We took that for granted prior to COVID. Prior to COVID, um, we took our health for granted. You know, so like we took a lot of things for granted. Like we even took human life for granted. When somebody died, we moved on. We didn't care. You know, when people were suffering around the globe, we never cared because you could come home and you could watch basketball and you could see the crowd cheering and that, 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 that energy, that euphoric energy would enter your body and you would feel okay. And once the game was over, you went on social media and you jumped in another illusion. So we were jumping from illusion to illusion to illusion the, all of the years prior to 2020. That's what we've been doing. Our whole life has been jumping from one illusion to the next to the next prior to COVID, right? <coughs> Excuse me. But COVID changed all of that. So I'm telling you the three things you need to understand in this world to help you navigate this world for you to be, to understand this world, for nobody to be, have the power to control you. There are realities, there are tools, and then there are illusions, right? And I will tell you what the reality is. The reality is what the creator created. The oxygen that we breathe, the things that we were taking for granted, oxygen, right? That we were taking for granted. The creator created that. That's reality. The sun, you know, being outside, being in the sun, being able to travel across the globe, right? Being able to do things, right? Out in nature, right? Seeing the animals, you know, respecting the, 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 the earth. That's reality, right? And taking care of your health, being around, able to access your parents and your loved ones, right? Being able to access them, that's reality. Being able to access people, that's reality. Being able to access those things are reality, right? And then everything else in the world that people do without technology, without tools, without money, that's all reality. But the things that human beings create, those things are called tools. So everything that human beings create, uh, this, this car I'm sitting in, it's a tool. The glasses I'm wearing, it's a tool. The bed I sleep on, it's a tool. The house I live in, it's a tool. Um, everything in our that we use to facilitate our lives are tools. Everything we use to facilitate our lives are tools. Okay? So you need to understand what a tool is. Understand or reality is always going to be there or reality humans have no control over reality The creator created reality. So the creator is when you access reality you access with the creator you interact with the creator When you don't access reality and you focus on the tools, right? You are you are disconnected from the creator you are disconnected from the universe from the energy of things you are disconnected when you don't Okay, when you don't access reality. So prior to 2020, we ignored reality. Prior to 2020, right? We ignored reality. We sort of disconnected from the creator completely. All of us, we disconnected from nature, from the water, from everything, our health. We disconnected because why? The tools we created to facilitate our lives, these tools have a side effect, the side effect of tools is called illusions. The side effects that tools generate are called illusions. So those are the three things you need to understand to navigate this planet, this universe. Reality, tools, and illusions. Illusions are what the tools that we have generate. The more tools you have, the more illusion you generate. Okay? I will give you an example. If you have a million dollars, that means you have more tools than I do. Okay, because I don't have a million dollars. So you have more tools than I do. And guess what? The tools you have can generate an illusion about you. Oh, somebody just greeted me. How are you doing, brother? Thank you uh, for coming on. I'm just here uh, giving a lecture. So let me continue. So the tools, the tools 
you have can create illusions. The more tools you have, the more tools you have as an individual, if you have over plus or surplus of tools, an exaggerated amount of tools you are hoarding, you are storing, you are keeping to yourself, it creates an illusion, okay? When that illusion create and other people, uh, or our perception interacts with the illusion you create around yourself, we become enamored or we become controlled by your illusion. So let me break that down for people. Let's say Bill Gates has a billion dollars. He's a billionaire, right? So now what that means is, it doesn't mean that Bill Gates is not a regular human being like everybody else. According to reality, Bill Gates is just an ordinary human being. That means he takes showers. That means if he goes outside, it will rain on him. That means the birds can take a shit on him. That means a, a lion, if a lion sees him on the safari, the lion can either eat him or leave him. That's what reality is. A lightning can strike from the sky and strike him. He's not immune to any of those things. Bill Gates is not immune to any of those things. Right? So Bill Gates is bound by the laws of reality. Now, let's take it one step further. The tools. Money is a tool. Bill Gates has accumulated a lot of wealth, a lot of money. So he has an exaggerated amount of money. Right? So that's a lot of tools he has. One single individual has a lot of tools. Right? So the tools, what are tools? Tools are things to facilitate our lives, to make our lives easy. Right? But when you have an exaggerated amount of tools, your life becomes overly easy. Overly easy. You basically go through life sort of on a cloud. Right? And so you disconnect from reality. You disconnect from reality when you have an exaggerated amount of tools. So I will give you an, another example, okay, to help you to further uh, 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 your understanding. So Bill Gates has all this money now, right? This exaggerated amount of money. He's disconnected from reality completely. He doesn't believe in the immune system anymore. He doesn't believe that Mother Nature or, 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 or the universe should do what it's supposed to do. He thinks it's his job to, to, to correct population growth. He thinks it's his job to vaccinate the people on the earth. You see what I mean? So now he has this exaggerated amount of tools. The tools have created an illusion of power. An illusion of power. So tools create an illusion of power. Why? Because all of us around who are seeing his tools, he has this exaggerated amount of tools. Guess what that has done to us? That has created an illusion on our perception. We are blinded by his money. So we, we neglect his reality. We neglect his reality that he's a real human being like us. We now start to see him like somebody great. But he's just an ordinary human being who goes through the same thing as us. The only thing is the amount of exaggerated tools he has has facilitated his life. And because it has facilitated his life, he is able to, to go through life on a different scale than me and you. Me and you have to put in more effort into life, maybe more labor, manual labor. He has to put in less manual labor. His tools works for him. The exaggerated amount of tools he has, what it does is it attracts people to him. And people come to him and he uses his tools to control those people, right? So as he controls those people, those people serve him. Do you understand now? So when they say money is the root of all evil, money is not the root of all evil. The illusion of exaggerated money, the illusion that, that's created by an exaggerated amount of money is the root of all evil. The illusion that people feed ourselves, that we, we get trapped in, that control us, that is the root of all our insanity. It is not actually, it's not evil, it's insanity. It, it's a mental health. It's, it's a problem of our perception because we do not understand perception, right? So reality, tools, and illusions. That's all you need to understand. If somebody has an exaggerated amount of tools, that person is surrounded by illusion. If you have an iPhone 10 or whatever, iPhone 11 Ultra Plus, right? 
That iPhone 11 Ultra Plus creates an illusion in your mind that you, maybe you can take better selfie. Maybe you can, you know, do and things in a better way, right? So you might start to think that somehow you have acquired a status symbol. You know, you think that the tool that you have gives you a status symbol. So in this world, there is no status symbol. There's no, we are all organic life, all humans, creatures, all animals. We all fall under the same rule of nature. We all fall under all the laws. The only difference is when you have an exaggerated amount of tools, you change, you're able to change things. You're able to do things in a different way. Okay? That's the only difference. So, if you see politicians, let's come down to politicians, right? What is a politician? A politician is, is, a, is a person that has been given a tool. All right? But because the tool is exaggerated to the, to the extent that the politician, it, it causes a, 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 a problem of perception. Or it basically uh, 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 mislead the person. So, you, you call it votes. You call it democr in democracy, you call these things votes, right? People go to the polls and they vote for this uh, politician. So, this politician say, yes, I'm loved by the people. I'm loved, right? So, that's an exaggerated amount of energy a lot of people are putting into one person. So all you got all these people take their energy, right? And they put it into this person. That's a, they take all that and when they put it into that person, this politician, this politician now has this exaggerated amount of control, of power. And so what that does is it creates an illusion. He begins to think that he's actually important. He's actually someone. He begins to be fooled by the illusion, right? But he's not that important. He's just there to, to, to serve the people. He's just there to use the tool that the people gave him to serve them. But he's confused because of the amount of support that people gave him. Because people gravitate towards you when you have an exaggerated amount of what? Tools. So power is an exaggerated amount of tools, okay? So um, let me go to the next thing I want to talk about, the illusion, right? What causes our unhappiness? When we are disconnected from reality so far, when the illusion becomes so strong and overbearing and it's hard for us to live in reality, we become unhappy. We become miserable. Okay? We become emotionally unstable. We become emotionally unstable because of the impact of the illusion on us. You understand? Because we are so far from reality that now we become hollow inside. We become disconnected from the creator, so to speak. Once you disconnect from reality, you disconnect from the creator, right? When you come back to reality, you come back to the creator because the only way to interact with the creator is to be real, to be in reality. You know, that's the only way. You cannot in interact with the creator through illusions. It's, it's not possible. Illusions are generated by tools. Illusions are generated by tools. Okay? So let me tell you guys a story, then I will end this live here. Um, so when I was a boy, when I was a boy, one day my family sent me to the well to get water. In Back in Liberia, we have to go to the, 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 the well and we have to pull water out of the well and we have to put it in the tub on our heads and we have to walk back all the way home. So when I was a boy in Liberia, my family sent me to the well and the well was like about about a mile and a half away from the house about a mile and a half away from the house so I went to the well with the tub on my head and I pour, I poured the water and I filled it up right and I was about I think nine years old or something so I filled up the water in in a tub on my head and as I did that I was coming back on my way and I lost my way I lost the path on my way back home. So when I lost my path on my way back home, guess what happened to me? I was terrified. You know, I was more terrified of going home and, and, and late. You know, one, I was terrified of going home late because my family sent me to the well to get water and I've been gone for like an hour, right? 
So I was afraid of that, one. I was afraid the water was spilling because every time my neck was twisted sideways from lifting the water and it was hurting me so bad, I was in so much pain and I couldn't find my way and the water was spilling and I began to worry about that. So I was worried about the water spilling. That's two. So I was afraid of going back home late because my family sent me and I've been gone for an hour. I've been lost for an hour wandering from different neighborhoods to different neighborhoods. Two, the water was spilling and I was in pain. My neck was crooked and it was heavy and I was staggering. I couldn't see. I was wet and I was wandering, suffering. And as I was suffering in agony and there was a lady, an elderly lady. She was sitting there. You know, this is why African women are to be respected. African women are to be treasured. African women are to be honored. This is why I say this, that no matter how you feel in this world, always put an African woman very high. You know, no matter what she does, always honor an African woman. I tell you this in my life, you know, because this experience has taught me a lot about the African woman. It had taught me so much about the African woman that I never, in such a simplistic way. So look at this, right? I have this heavy tub of water on my neck and my neck is crooked and I've been lost for like an hour. I've walked like almost two miles from the well, circling, confused, wet. You know, I'm, 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 I'm trembling with fear of losing all the water in the tub and I'm trembling with fear of going late. What will my family say because I've been so late? The fear is overwhelming me. And then the woman stops me. She said, what's wrong, my son? And I told her, I said, I lost my way. I don't know where I'm going. I, I went to the well to get water and I lost my way. And she said, you lost your way? How long ago have you been walking around with this stuff? I said, I've been walking around, I don't know, a long time, ever since, you know, the, the sun shadow, you know, I, the sun was over there and etc. And the woman looked at me and she said, You've been carrying this tub on your head for one hour? For this long? I say, yes. You know, wh where have you gone? I told her I went to that neighborhood. I went to that neighborhood. And she's like, really? I say, yes. She said, you know what? Take the water off your head and pour the water onto the ground. I said, what? No, I can't do that. My family, will, 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 what will they say? You know, she said, trust me. Take the water off your head and pour it into the ground. And I and I, I, I took the water off my head and I poured it onto the, onto the ground. And you know what happened? My neck that had been tilted like this for one hour, I was able to straighten my neck. I was able to straighten my neck. The pain that had been hurting me for one hour, I'd been traveling down this road for suffering. This woman had taken away my pain just with a few words. Tell me, say, take the thing off your head and pour the water onto the ground. And she said, now, hold the tub in your hand, right? And she said, now, follow that road and then look for your way home. And I, 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 you know, I was so confused. Like, this is the first time in my life that my whole life I've been controlled by fear. I was afraid of everything. I've been afraid of what my family would say, what my, fa you know, I've been afraid of every single thing my whole life. And then with this simple gesture, this woman just tells me, she releases me from my fear. Tells me, take the tub off, pour the water into the ground and hold the tub in your hand and walk down the path until you find your way home. I took the tub off my head Pour the water onto the ground, straightened my neck, and I was in less pain. And I started walking, and I recognized everything around me. Suddenly, I recognized all the roads around me. Suddenly, I could see the reality suddenly. Everything was, I could see the road home. I could see this way, I could see that way. Everything had become clear to me when I took that tub of water off my head and poured it and began walking. And because of this act, this woman had saved me 
from so much pain and suffering. You know, I was in pain, but I didn't know how to free myself from that pain. I was suffering, going in circle, but I didn't know what to do. And this person came and just told me, let it go. Take it off your head and pour it into the ground and then find your way. And I did that. And I broke out of the illusion. And just with that gesture, I was able to break free from the illusion. I was in pain, the illusion of the fear. The fear is what the illusion was. The fear of what my family would think, what they would say. You know how the water, I come home without water. That fear, that, t that terror. I was in terror. And suddenly, when the pain was gone, when the, when the water was off my head, guess what happened? I went home. And I told them the truth. I said, I was walking. I lost my way because the water, you gave me a tub that was big and the water in that tub was full. It's too heavy for me. I couldn't see. I couldn't see my way. I was lost and confused and I was, in, and I was terrified. And you know what my family said to me? Okay. That's what they said. Okay. And they gave me a smaller bucket and they said, go and get some more water. And I went and I held the bucket in my hand this time and I knew my way back home. So why am I telling everybody this? 2020, 2021, 2020, uh, uh, 20, uh, uh, the year before 2020, all those other years, 2000, uh, uh, 2019, 2017, 2016, those were all the water we were carrying on our heads as African people, as black people, globally. We've been carrying this water on our head and our necks have been hurting and we've been under this illusion, this fear, this terror for so long. And then 2020 came and 2020 is that, that old lady, that African woman that said, pour the water onto the ground and find your way. That's what 2020 is. 2020 is telling us to pour the water from our heads, the suffering, the pain. Pour it onto the ground and find your way. Whatever 2019 had taught you, whatever 2020, uh, 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 2016 and 17 had done to you, all that is in the past. The only thing that matters right now is 2020 has told you to pour the water onto the ground and move forward. And you will see that 2020 has made you a better person. Because you have poured that water, the pain, you have poured the pain outside. The thing that was causing you pain, you have poured it into the ground, right? I'm telling African people, we need to trust each other. We need to let go of the water that's hurting us, that distrust, that anger, that, 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 that feeling that we feel towards each other, that laziness, that's in, that everything is impossible. Let go of that mindset, right? Develop the mind flow. If you scroll down my page, if you go on my page and you scroll down, you will see something I talk about mind flow. Mind flow is a concept that's part of the organic African paradigm, right? So what mind flow is, there is mindset and mind flow. You see the word set means to put in place, to put down, to fix something to a place, right? To make something stagnant, to put something here. So when you tell someone to change their mindset, you're telling someone to, to, to take their mind from one position and put it into another position. That's a mindset. And you take that, you, you're advising that person to take their mind from one stagnant position and put it in another stagnant position. That's a mindset. But what a mind flow is, to flow means to fly. To flow means to, 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 to be like water, to be fluid, right? To, 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 to generate. So let me tell you something. Instead of having a mindset in 2020, have a mind flow. Have a mind flow. Open your mind and let information flow into it. Let information flow. Let people, when people give you advice, good advice, take the advice and make it into a reality. Make it tangible. You have that power. You always had the power. The only problem was you were complaining. You were complaining. You were using your mouth instead of your, your hands. We've always had the power right here. But we use this too much 
and we don't use this enough. So I'm telling you, right? Use your mind flow. Mind flow, not mindset. Don't change your mindset. Get rid of your mindset. Develop mind flow. When you develop mind flow, your interaction with people will give you, you will be able to exchange information. You will become an extension of each person you meet, their knowledge. You will become an extension of their knowledge. I've met a lot of people 2020, and each of those people have given me knowledge, and I've given them knowledge. I'm an extension of their knowledge, and they're an extension of my knowledge. And that is what mind flow is. That's what I'm asking all the African people to develop. Please, take this on as your new way. You know, don't just listen to what I say and then, you know, go back to your, 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 your reality or whatever it is. To go back to carrying that water on your head. Pour the water out. Pour the water out. Okay, listen to the African woman. The African elder. The ancestor that came to me that day and said pour the water out. And free yourself from that stress, that pain, that, 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 that fear, that illusion. Listen to that ancestor. Pour the water out. Now, find your way. Develop your mind flow and find your way. Build rapport with your fellow Africans. Even if you have 10 Africans, right? Build rapport with them. Reciprocate knowledge with them right and when you reciprocate knowledge with them guess what happens your mind begins to flow your mind begins to fly your mind begins to glide right you become like water your mind becomes like the ocean you interact in you interact you're in, you're exchanging exchanging that's what you need that's what 2020 has brought us so this is what Chadwick Boseman has taught me creation energy Okay, and positive energy. If you can live your life with creation energy and positive energy. If you can work every day with positive energy and creation energy. It don't matter if you're sick. It don't matter if you have tools. You don't need the tools. You have the tools. You don't have the tools. Do your best to create. Do your best to be positive. Change your disposition. And when you leave this world. You will leave the same impact that this man left on us. To be honest, I'm more I'm more obsessed with the, the man than I am with the character of Black Panther. Yes, Black Panther was a great uh, um, inspiration for children. I mean, I'm I'm personally glad that Black Panther children can black children can see him, right? But I'm more proud of Chadwick Boseman because he lived with all that agony, all that pain, and he produced creativity, positivity. You know, he he let go of everything. He let go of the need for people to feel sorry for him. He let go of all those things. And he focused on two things. Finding his way, okay, and doing it without fear. He did it without fear. And this is what I'm telling everybody here. Do things without fear. Uh, take that water off your head and dump it and live without fear and do it. That's all there is to it. Do it. If we want Africa back, if Africa is our home, let's take it. Let's take it. If we are if we if we fall in the process of taking our home back, we will have done something positive. We will have done something creative. It's our home. It's ours. Why should we why should we be looked at negative for, for, for taking our home back? For developing, for hoping for change in our, our home. It's our our home. Anything we do is creative. Anything we do is positive for our home if we are in the process of taking it back. But if we're not developing ourselves to take Africa back, then I don't think that's you know we're not living our best life. So I'm done with this live. I wanted to take, thank everybody for, for coming on here. If you want to share it, be my guest, share it. Um, you know, um, I want to tell everybody, remember what I taught you today. Reality, tools, and illusion. Know the difference. And also, I want you to remember this. That, 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 that water you're carrying on your head, 
that's causing you pain, dump it. 2020 is a good year. 2020 is our year as Africans. 2020 is our year. We lose people, but those people were positive. They've done enough. They had done their best. And if we lose them, so what? We take up the energy that they had and we go, we continue. You know, I look at Chadwick Boseman in a, like a, like this man is amazing. I want to be like him. I want to die in a, in the same uh, 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 energy that he would die in. You know, if I die being a person who makes this much difference in the world, are you kidding me? I don't want to live long if, if that's the offer. If that's what the, the creator wants from me, I'll be like, yes. If I can make a difference in this world, if I can achieve what I want, I don't want to live to 100. I don't want to live to 70 even. Just let me make a positive contribution to this planet. Just let me make a positive contribution to Africa and you can have my life. Just let me that chance to make a positive change on the African people. A real contribution. I mean real. I want to change Liberia. I want to change all of African people. I want to change our mindset to mind flow. I want to take us from inorganic African paradigm to organic African paradigm. If I can do that, that's a life worth, worth living. Even in four or five years, if I can accomplish this, every African on the planet has an organic African paradigm. I mean, I'm good. I'm good. So, I'm um, again. If you want to, you know, share this live, be my guest. If you want to teach others what I've said, be my guest. You know, but don't be hard on 2020. 2020 is our year. So, um, I'm going to end this live. The one who comes in peace is always welcome. The one who comes to teach is always welcome. And the one who comes to learn is especially always welcome. Thank you all, and I appreciate you all.